Welcome back. Uh, last lesson, we looked at the Terraform configuration language syntax, and uh, we were going through the main components that make up the TCL, our blocks, attributes, and expressions. Uh, I quickly ran through the list of block types in uh, Terraform for a bit of context in that lesson. Uh, but in this lesson, we'll build on those block types further. And we'll do a quick intro for each of those block types. Now, first up, we have our Terraform block type. Uh, within this Terraform block type, we can specify some configuration information for Terraform itself. Within this block type, we can specify what version of Terraform we want to use. Now, just like most software projects, Terraform has a constant cycle of releases that include bug fixes, various improvements, and new features. But consider that as part of our Terraform configuration that we're going to be building, uh, maybe we want to use a new feature that just came out in a brand new version of Terraform. Your resulting Terraform code you created depends on this newly released functionality. Now, if that's the case, you want to ensure that whoever's executing your Terraform code is doing so using the expected version of Terraform so that Terraform can utilize that latest new feature. If someone is using an older version of Terraform and that feature that you used in the newest version doesn't exist in their version yet, uh, that could result in all kinds of different errors and weird behaviors when they try to execute that uh, Terraform configuration. So within this Terraform block type now, uh, we know we can specify the Terraform version for our configuration, uh, but we can also specify the version requirements for our Terraform providers as well. Now we'll be discussing providers a lot more really soon in the course, but these are essentially the main Terraform plugins that allow Terraform to interact with the different external resource providers. An easy example of this is if we think about some major cloud service providers like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud Platform, uh, each of these providers have their own unique service offerings and APIs to interact with their platform and services. Providers are the plugins that you can pull into your Terraform configuration uh, so that it can interact with these different providers and access the various resources that are part of that overall provider. Now, these Terraform providers or plugins get versioned separately from uh, Terraform itself. Uh, but within the Terraform block type, we can specify the specific version of the provider we want to use in our configuration as well. Again, we'll be covering this Terraform provider stuff in a lot more depth very soon. Uh, but just be aware that uh, we can define our Terraform version and provider versions within the Terraform block type. And uh, beyond the specific version, we can also specify a range of versions uh, that we could allow as well. Now, moving right along, uh, next we have our provider block. The provider, again, is just referring to the Terraform plugins we require based on the uh, cloud platform or SaaS-based platforms we want uh, Terraform to interact with. So in the Terraform block type, we declare what uh, providers we actually want to use in our Terraform configuration. But each of these providers may have a number of arguments that are required or uh, perhaps optional arguments to further define how Terraform will interact with that uh, particular provider. Now, for a quick example of this, if we take a look at our AWS provider, we can define what region to use in our provider block. This way, when we deploy our infrastructure resources we create in Terraform, uh, this argument tells Terraform what region we want the uh, resources provisioned in, uh, in this case, the US East 1 region. All these provider configuration arguments are documented as part of the published providers that are available for us to use. We can reference all these arguments available for a particular provider so you can tune your provider configuration to your unique requirements. Now, next on our list here are resource blocks. So these resource blocks define a resource type, which defines the kind of infrastructure resource object Terraform will manage and all the different arguments that the resource supports. Now, these different resource types actually come from the provider plugins that we uh, pull into Terraform. And this provider to resource relationship can get uh, a little confusing. So I thought at this point, we take a very quick look at the AWS provider documentation. And I think this will help build a better mental model of how this stuff ties together. So this is the core AWS provider from the uh, Terraform registry. Uh, now, this is the provider or plugin that we'd use to uh, install into Terraform if we wanted to uh, have Terraform interact with the AWS cloud provider. Now, I'm not going to get into all the details of this provider, but I just wanted to highlight this quick example here as I think it helps illustrate how resources relate to the providers. So if you go through this configuration example really quick, we have our top level Terraform block type. And within that, we have a nested block specifying our required providers or like that plugin that we're trying to install into Terraform, uh, which in this case is the AWS provider. Uh, we have a minimum version. And then down below, we have our provider block type where we're configuring the AWS provider, again, which we've pulled in and installed up here. And we're passing an argument to it where we're specifying the region. And then below that, we have our resource block type. Uh, in this case, we're using the AWS underscore VPC resource. 
And uh, this resource seems to be taking a additional label, uh, giving the VPC a name, uh, being example in this case. Then within the resource block body here, we're uh, passing a IP address range for the CIDR block for the VPC. Now this AWS VPC resource is actually uh, enabled from this AWS provider for us. And we can kind of see that based on this AWS provider documentation. If we go up to the uh, top filter search bar here and type in this AWS VPC resource, we can actually find that AWS VPC resource. Now this provider in their documentation uh, break down all the different resources and kind of group them by the AWS service itself. So under the main VPC section here, we have all the different resources related to that VPC service. We can just take a quick look at this uh, one from the example here, this AWS underscore VPC. Now we get some information about the resource itself. And we can see that this AWS VPC resource is the resource we'd use if we wanted to uh, create or manage an AWS VPC. Now most resource documentation provides a bunch of usage examples. And then down below, we have our argument reference, which lists all the required or optional arguments that we can add to the uh, resource configuration. So I hope that helps highlight how this AWS VPC resource actually comes from the AWS provider itself. Next up, we have our modules block. Now modules are a type of logical container where we can put all kinds of different resources in that all work together to make up some kind of specific function of our infrastructure. Now there's a lot of different ways we can leverage modules, uh, but a simple example might be for having uh, a module for a type of web service. Uh, maybe that web service is made up of a bunch of compute resources, a load balancer, uh, some database, and a whole bunch of different networking and security-based resources. Now, if we need to deploy this web service very frequently across different environments and try to ensure all those environments have a consistent configuration, it may make sense to treat the web service itself as a kind of single object rather than stitch together all these individual pieces that make up the service. Modules provide us this capability by bundling up all these different resources and creating these reusable objects for us. The next block on our list here is to run through the input variable block. Now, Terraform has a few different ways we can use name values to help us define our Terraform resources and capture the return output data from our resources as they're created. Now, these input variables work as our different parameters that we can use in our Terraform modules to define different values or behaviors for the resources that we define. Input variables help us with that don't repeat yourself or dry principle. That's a simple example here. Uh, if we needed to provision an AWS EC2 instance, we need to provide the Amazon machine image ID and define the instance type we want. Now, if we need hundreds of different EC2 instances for our environment, uh, we don't necessarily want to create you know, hundreds of different modules for each variation of these different EC2 resources that we need. So we can actually use the same module over and over for managing each EC2 resource in Terraform, uh, but use different input values. Uh, with these input values, we can tune the behavior and provide different parameters uh, to the same reusable source Terraform module. Now, a quick reminder that we have lessons and even entire sections coming up later on this course that cover all these areas in a lot more depth. Uh, we're just trying to get that 10,000 foot view of some of these topics and help us understand the block types available in Terraform at this point. Uh, so next up are our local values or the locals block. Now this locals block allows us to declare named values that we can use in our Terraform configuration. These local variables are often helpful to avoid the repetition of certain values in our Terraform configuration uh, or for values that frequently change. Uh, we can update a local value in one spot and have that value referenced from various parts in our configuration to avoid having to modify that source configuration and update that single value in multiple places. Now next we'll jump right into our output values block. Uh, and this is where we can capture return values for our infrastructure resources. Uh, if we go back to a AWS EC2 instance example, uh, when we launch an EC2 instance, it receives that unique IP address. Uh, and this IP address gets generated as that resource is created. Uh, in order to do that, we need to capture that IP inside a Terraform through these output values. Uh, we can then reference these named uh, values for other parts of our overall Terraform modules uh, and different resources if needed. Now, if you have a bit of programming background, uh, you can think of the input variables we uh, covered there as our function arguments, uh, our output values in Terraform as our function return values, and local values as sort of our function temporary local variables. And next, we'll jump right over into the data block. Now, these data blocks allow Terraform to access information that exists outside of Terraform, 
or in a different Terraform configuration. Uh, sometimes we need a reference data from a cloud provider or other SaaS provider in order to know what values to use or the state of something else on the provider side in a real-time manner. Uh, these data blocks provide a way to access and refer to this information that exists outside of Terraform. Then next up, we have our provisioners block. Now, provisioners are generally considered a last resort and you should do your best to avoid using them. They're basically there to help you out if you have unique and custom actions you need to take with your infrastructure components where there's basically no other option in the declarative method of the Terraform configuration language. And that brings us to our last block type we want to cover here, which are dynamic blocks. Now, dynamic blocks are a way to create repeated nested blocks. So we can use dynamic blocks within our top level provider, resource, data, and provisioner blocks. Uh, these dynamic blocks come in handy when you need to iterate over some type of value. Uh, so we can have a, maybe an input value, which is actually a list. And then uh, we can use those values to pass that to a resource. And maybe we want each of those elements in that list to generate a, a new nested block that uses each value in that list to configure some aspect of our resource. Now, I haven't come across too many resources or providers that actually expect these nested blocks as arguments, uh, but just be aware that these dynamic blocks exist and can provide a way to iterate over some type of complex value like a list and generate uh, nested blocks as a result. So that wraps up our overview of the Terraform block types. I'm looking forward to diving deeper in all this stuff as we work through more of those hands-on examples later in the course, but we have a few more foundational lessons to get through first. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.